Hey guys, it's Brie with Arco Iris Ranch and it is time for our May garden tour. It's been raining a little bit today, so hopefully it doesn't start raining while I'm out here. But first thing I wanted to show y'all is our blueberry bush. We have actually been harvesting a few blueberries every other day or so, and we have really been enjoying this little garden snack. I'm gonna go ahead and turn y'all around because we do have a few that are ripe right now. So the variety is a bountiful blueberry bush and you can just see there are berries everywhere. There's a couple that are done right there and then it's just covered in berries all over it. We got this one right here. That's like a perfect blueberry right there. This has really been fun having this in the garden. So I originally anticipated on covering that with some kind of wire or something like that so the birds wouldn't get it. Cross my fingers. I've been very, very lucky that nothing has been eating them except for us. So. Hopefully now that I say that, I don't start losing them all to the birds. But now we are over here next to my peach tree and we do have quite a few peaches on it. Now, not all the blossoms that I had on here actually got pollinated because there's definitely not as many peaches as there were flowers. But let me go ahead and turn y'all around and show y'all a few of the peaches that we have. So in here, this is probably one of the biggest ones right there. And then I did notice I have this one right here, but unfortunately something else has been enjoying it. But there are a few other peaches scattered around here. Like here's a pretty good one right here. May have a little bit of damage on it. But I also have not put anything on this to save the fruit from the animals either. My sister put like little organza bags over hers so that way hopefully she doesn't have any pest damage. So I probably should have done that but I just haven't had a chance to do that just yet. The mosquitoes have been pretty bad recently. I did spray myself but unfortunately I still see them flying around me so not something that I enjoy dealing with in the summer unfortunately. So now we're actually stepping into the vegetable garden and I do have quite a bit going on over here. So the first bed I want to start with is where I planted my peppers and some good news and some bad news about my peas. So let's go ahead and look at that. The peas are getting really, really tall, looking great until you look down at the bottom and that's what's happening to the bottom. So I don't know if that's powdery mildew or what, but I know they definitely don't like the heat. And so I'm very upset because the top looks so good and we've been getting so many blossoms on them. You can see the flowers right there. There's more over here. There's a bunch up here. And then if you look, we actually have some peas. Now these ones are pretty thin. Let me get in here and show y'all. These ones right here. Let me go ahead and pull these off. There's that one and then there's this one right here. Those are pretty thick pea pods right there. Now I've never grown peas, so I am assuming that these are done, but I'm really not 100% positive, but I'm going to let my husband taste them and let me know what he thinks later. But sadly, these plants are gonna have to go, but I just wanted to leave them in there so I could at least show you all the peas on there. But I definitely don't want all that dead powdery mildew or whatever that is down at the bottom. I don't want that in there. I don't want it to spread to anything else in my garden. I'm not sure if it will or not, but I don't want to take a chance. But I've waited so long and to finally see peas on there, that is pretty exciting for sure. Now the rest of this bed has all my peppers in it and a few onions, so let's go ahead and look at those. So here are the onions that I planted. This is only a few of them. You'll see more here in just a minute. But the necks aren't flopping over yet but they do look like they are starting to bulb up a little bit. So that's definitely exciting. Not all of them, because I guarantee you if we look at this one, yeah, nothing's, nothing's happening on that one. But the bigger ones, it does appear like they are bulbing up a little bit. So these ones right here, these are the habaneros, and they definitely don't look the best. They do have some new growth coming up out of the top of them, but they are really yellow, so those aren't looking the best. These next ones behind it are our tan jalapenos, and these are actually growing flowers on them. I've been pulling all the flowers off, but they have gotten pretty tall, so I think I am going to leave them. We've got that one right there looking a little bit smaller, but you can see the other two are doing good, and they all have flowers on them. 
The ones behind that are the regular jalapenos. Same thing, they're growing and putting buds on them. That one is my sweet cherry pepper, and same thing, it's growing. I've been pulling all the flowers off, but I think I'm gonna leave those on there. And this right here is just a random radish. And look at that, this is a scarlet globe radish. I planted the radish seeds and a long time ago, and none of them even grew hardly at all. And then recently, I had several that randomly popped up, and I think that one's a decent size, considering the variety, it's supposed to be a really, really tiny one. So that's it for the pepper bed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these down real quick. So directly behind me is across from the pepper bed, and sadly, I did lose a few things in this bed. The Victoria rhubarb does not like the Texas heat. It is not doing good at all whatsoever. So I think that is definitely a goner. My red cabbage is looking pretty good. Looks like it's starting to maybe create a head. I have had some worms on these. So unfortunately you can see that's what all this damage is right there. So I definitely gotta keep an eye on that. This is one of my zucchinis. This one's doing pretty good. The one on the other side over here, I need to pull that one out and start another seed. I don't know what happened to that one, but it did not start growing properly. And then that right there is just a weed. But on this side, I do have a nasturtium right there. It's not looking the best, but it's growing, it's trying. The purple basil is very, very small. Not doing the best, but I really thought it would be bigger by now, but it's trying. And then back here on the other side, these right here are the cucumbers, and you can see these ones on this end are doing a little bit better than those two over there on that end. Here is our zinnia bed, and we had pretty good germination on these. I think all of this first variety and the second variety and the third variety all look like they have sprouted. Now, we did have a little bit of spotty germination on the second side. So we got one missing right there. Looks like all three of those didn't come up. We got one missing on the outside over there. One missing on that outside edge. And then we got two on the end of the very last row that aren't doing anything. But that one is doing pretty good. With all the rain that we are supposed to have, these flowers should take off really, really good. Now I'm gonna go over to my onion bed. And since the last video, there's actually been some progress in this. So I am pretty excited. I was honestly starting to give up and think that I wasn't gonna get any onions. But let me turn y'all around and show y'all what I'm starting to see. So this is what the bed looks like and it is pretty wild. I planted like 160 onions in this bed. So they're all standing up pretty tall still. But then like this one right here, let me see if I can get in there and show y'all. Might be a little hard to tell, but it is actually starting to bulb up pretty nicely. So I am pretty excited, but the top is still extra hard. So it's definitely not any more time to harvest these yet, but seeing some of them starting to thicken up and bulb up, uh, maybe not that one. Looks can be deceiving. Oh, look at this one right here. That one is starting to bulb up, so that's pretty exciting. So I don't know how much longer, but I am going to, I think, get some onions in here. Now the strawberries are all down here in the middle. We still have some flowers on them. And then like these ones, right, or this plant right here, still has some berries growing. But I did have a patch right here in the middle that sadly started dying. So I did pull those out. You can see like this right here isn't doing good. So I really don't wanna leave that inside there. But we so far have gotten so many strawberries off this bed. So it is definitely awesome to have those. So I think they're just gonna take a little break, but I think they will start coming back here soon. Now over to the sunflower bed. As you can see, some sunflowers are doing better than others. Look how big this one is right here. 
that one is showing off for sure so as you can see pretty good germination rate on all of these there are a few spots that are missing some and like this one right here is not looking good i don't remember what variety this one is but that one's definitely not looking very good and then like if you look at that little guy that's not doing good either but I am happy to see these ones on the end doing really, really good. These are the Russian Mammoth and the Skyscrapers on the end. Definitely going to be exciting to see these sunflowers take off. I still want to plant a bunch more sunflowers, but I just haven't gotten around to doing that. But I'll show y'all where I plan on putting the other sunflower seeds here in just a little bit. So now I want to turn y'all around. And if you've been following along with my videos, you saw that I had originally planted all of my tomatoes. And then I ended up having to tear out five of the tomatoes out of the six that I have on my tomato wall because I think I accidentally topped them and they weren't growing anymore and they were completely, all the leaves were curling up and nothing was happening. I am happy to report all the ones that I replaced those with were ones that I started from seed myself and they are all doing fantastic. Let me turn you all around and show you all. So we'll start down here at the end, ignore the half dead marigold at least it's still trying to do something but this was the smallest tomato that i put in here this is the big rainbow one and it has put on a lot of growth and is looking really really good moving over to the tropical sunset now the lower leaves like this one back here and this one still don't look very good but look at how healthy the rest of the plant looks and it's actually starting to put on blossoms right there This one is the black from Tula. It's all the way up and actually touching the trellis now. I'm gonna have to get one of my tomato clips. These are what I use right here. I'll link these down below. I got them on Amazon and I got a ginormous bag and it was very, very cheap. And so that's what I'll actually use to attach that to the trellis soon. But you can see all of the blossoms up there on top looking really good. Now this is the only one that I did not have to pull out. This one was doing excellent. As you can see, look how tall it's gotten. And then this one, we actually have tomatoes on it. You can see that set right there. And then that one right there is looking really, really good. There's a few more behind it there. And then we just have flowers everywhere. All right there, here, back there, on the top on the other side this thing is just doing excellent and this is the bed that unfortunately i guess a calla lily is still down in the pot so i keep pulling it out but i don't want it growing up tall this one right there is also a black from tula as you can see it's getting pretty tall as well almost to the trellis and i don't know if that one has blossoms on it or not i can't really tell go around to the other side over here yep it actually does have blossoms growing in the middle there and then this one is my chocolate stripe now this one the leaves look completely different than all those other tomato leaves over there if you look at the petals on that one and see how many leaves are on it and then look over here at this one again and there's only three leaves on this one this one has five but it definitely looks different than all the other ones and if you also look in the middle, it has blossoms as well. Now that looks like one big blossom. So I don't know if that's gonna be like a cat-based one or what, but it looks pretty huge. So I am thrilled and so happy that I did make that decision to swap out those tomato plants because these are growing so nice, especially with all this rain that we're gonna have, they're really gonna take off for sure. So, so excited about those. Now, all of my strawberries in my little purple towers, I did not do a good job watering those. So those ones are almost completely dead. That one's okay. I did lose the other one that was in it. This is a pecan tree that I got that started blooming or started growing underneath my neighbor's pecan tree. So I took that. You can see most of those are dead. That one is doing okay and actually starting to put on some fruit so that might be the only one maybe this one over here it doesn't look too bad but sadly 
That's what happens when you don't water things. Oh, I almost forgot. I do have one more tomato. This was the Cherokee purple that I also did not replace when I did that last video. And it's looking okay. A few of the leaves don't look good, but let's take a look at that one. So here's what this one's looking like. As you can see, these lower leaves look pretty rough. It went up and it split off and has two main leaders now and is covered in blossoms up there. So this one is not on drip irrigation, so it has not gotten the consistent watering like the, all the other ones have, but it's still alive. So I'm gonna keep watering it and just see what happens with this one. So that's it for everything inside the vegetable garden. So now we're gonna move on out and look at these flowers that I actually have quite a few that are blooming now, which last time in the April garden tour video, they weren't blooming yet. So let's take a look at some of those. As you can see, we are getting some color now. So we'll start down here on the end. So these are the balloon flowers and they start off looking like that right there. And then when they open, Look how beautiful that is. And we got that one right there. And we also have another one right there. Those two I planted last year and they just came back. They self-seeded and they, the plants completely died, but they self-seeded and grew back this year. This is my head over heels hibiscus. As you can see, it has gotten pretty tall and it looks like starting to put some buds on it right there. This over here is a new delphinium that I got, and it is not looking the best, but it was really, really pretty when I got it. These down here are also self-seeded from last year. It's either Celosia or Amaranth. I've gone back and forth between the two. I'm not sure, but I got those last year, and they were really, really pretty. They self-seeded all right there. And then down the row in the bed a little bit, you'll see some more. This is my ornamental onion. Still no bloom stalks coming out of it. I don't see anything down there in the middle yet. These are the calla lilies that we planted that we saved from last year. And you can see all that self-seeded back there and on this side over here. And then we have our double scoop mandarin echinaceas. Look at how beautiful that is. And this, as you can see, is gonna be covered in flowers soon. This right here in the front is one of our butterfly bushes. As you can see, it's working on putting on some flowers and it's getting pretty tall. It's not very wide, but definitely pretty tall. And then we have more of that self-seeded all right there. Oh, that's exciting. That is a sweet potato vine. I had that over in this bed last year and I pulled it all out, but I guess I forgot a tuber because it's coming back. And our lily of the Nile hasn't done much, only that tiny little piece growing right there. But then look at the Pavonia rock plant. This thing is huge and just covered in flowers. Now all the flowers close at night, so that's why it looks like that right there. But I took a picture the other morning, so I'll put a picture on the screen so you can see that. But this thing is huge. Next to it, the two salvias that I had here unfortunately died, so I moved this from another bed. Unfortunately, all the blooms are already spent on it, but I'm just going to leave that and it should definitely put off some new blooms here soon. We have our passion vine right here. Look how tall it's getting. This is the thing that I thought was dead all the way up there, and it's getting ready to have flowers all over it. And then one cool thing that I noticed, down there behind the bed, it must have self-seeded and started a whole new plant growing all the way up. So I left it. I figured that growing around the fence would actually be really pretty. Moving over here, this is that new passion vine that already gave us a bunch of flowers. It hasn't really put on too much new growth though, but that's what the flowers look like on it. Now these two salvias did come back and I am so happy that they did. Look at that flower. That is just absolutely beautiful. And those two plants will be covered here soon. But you can see there's already quite a bit on there. The mums are loving all the water. I don't think I see any blooms 
on there. Oh, actually, maybe a few getting ready to start down there. But I definitely expect these to bloom again soon. All the alliums, none of them really got tall enough. And you can see they all started dying on the tips. So I don't know what's going to happen with those. And there's that dahlia that I thought was dead. It's slowly but surely growing. Here is the other hibiscus. Getting pretty tall. This is getting eaten by caterpillars. Or not caterpillars, um, grasshoppers. I keep seeing them on there, but you can see it is just tearing this plant up, unfortunately. But it looks like it is going to start putting on buds soon. My guara, I don't know what happened to this. This looked so pretty, and then now it's like dying in the middle, and the leaves just look really, really bad. So I think, unfortunately, I'm going to have to pull this plant out. It's also covering up my aster back there that isn't looking the best either. Here is my Rose of Sharon, looking very, very sad. I don't know if it's because of the heat or what, but it's not looking very good. So this is what I thought was my Joseph's coat, but now I don't know what that is. <laughs> this is where the Joseph's coat was, but Joseph's coat has hot pink on the sleeve, it's variegated, and as you can see, that's not, so not too sure. There's some more calla lilies right there. And then this in the corner here was where my Duranta Sweet Memories was. That didn't start doing anything, so I pulled it out and planted this classic double peach hibiscus. But originally this was $23. My sister and I found them for $5 and it's beautiful. So it started dropping all the leaves, but it's still covered in buds. So I expect to see some beautiful flowers really, really soon. And then this was that, what was this called? Spiderwort, I think that I got from my dad's. It's still putting on flowers. You can see the little blue buds, but it's not looking the best. Finally seeing all the color on the flowers, so exciting. Now, yeah, some of those plants aren't doing good. I don't know if it's because we've already been having weather already almost up to 100 degrees and this garden does get full sun from what, right when the sun comes up all the way until about five um so unfortunately i think that's definitely taking a toll on some of those plants but they're still alive so I'm not going to give up on them yet now we are on the other side of the garden and as you can see some things are definitely putting on some color over here for sure down here in this galvanized tub is a canna lily that I saved from my dad's old house when he moved. So no blooms on it yet, but it's definitely coming. My rose bush, I don't have any roses on it right now, but I did have so many beautiful roses on it. And the salvia definitely has some color on it right now, but even when the bright purple things aren't on there, it still looks really, really pretty. The calla lilies are definitely putting on a show. I love the white variegation on the leaves, and then you can see when these flowers come up, they're just absolutely beautiful. Now, these are the ones that have already been on there for a while, so they do fade into this like light color, but like look at that one back there. That is absolutely beautiful. Love that plant. The blue bonnets, I still have not pulled off all these seed pods, but the birds have been enjoying the seeds. And then there's still plenty of seed pods on here for me to take off. But I did just notice there's still a flower on there. That's weird. The Shasta daisy still has a bunch that doesn't look good on it. But we are starting to get a few flowers on it again. So I was happy about that. The peony is not doing good. Not liking this hot weather, unfortunately. Cape daisy also all burning on the tips but we did get one flower on it the pansy it is time to go that is not doing good and my fresia i think that's how you pronounce it also isn't doing too good the three butterfly pin cushion flowers have been putting on so many beautiful flowers i definitely need to come out here and start deadheading this so it can put on some new growth this is my, I think this is called a fortune hyssop. 
I know it's a hyssop for sure, but I forgot the variety. But this thing is getting ready to start putting on its flowers. Look at how beautiful that is. Sadly, oh, what is that? I don't know what that bug is right there, but I definitely do not want it in my garden, I don't think. Let's go ahead and just get rid of that guy. If you know what that was, let me know, but it didn't look like a beneficial bug, so I went ahead and got rid of it for now. Let me know if that was a mistake or not. But one more sad thing about this hyssop, a bunny rabbit got up here and chewed off the whole front stalk. So you can see it's missing a huge hole in the middle. I was not happy about that. This lantana is putting on beautiful blooms for us. This right here, I don't know what this is. I don't think I planted it. It just started growing and whatever it is, it is happy. It looks like it has those tiny little flowers on it. So if you know what it is, please let me know. Got another one of those calla lilies. So beautiful. This is the Vista bubblegum that I got for 50 cents from Lowe's. It's doing okay, I guess. This is that thing I pulled up from my dad's house. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll put it up on the screen. The candy tuft has already bloomed quite a bit. I need to cut off all these old blooms, but you can see the new blooms coming. The flax lilies are slowly but surely coming up. You can see that one's looking a little bit bigger. This lantana is spreading everywhere, so that's doing good. Yeah, you guys, I should have come out and deadheaded everything before I did my garden tour video, but life happens. I didn't get to it. But you can see the pretty new flowers coming in. That's what color it is. So I just need to cut off all this old stuff. This butterfly bush, this is my Nano Blue. This one is also starting to put on flowers. This peony over here definitely looks a little bit better than that other one, but you can see the tips are still burning on it. And then we have a blue bonnet that still has some pretty flowers on it. Lots of seed pods that I need to get off. This is my new lavender that I got. It is a uh, Lavence lavender. Really pretty purple flowers on it. And I was correct, this is my trumpet flower. And the way I know that is, I'm about to have some more flowers on it. There's a bunch in the middle down there. I cannot wait to see that bloom. So definitely not everything that I transplanted came back or that I planted last year, but I am so happy with the things that are coming back. This is definitely a success for sure. Now, I do have a little bit of sad news. Sadly, we did make the decision to rehome Juicy, who was our potbelly pig. We have just decided that she's not a meat pig, so she's not really serving a purpose on our farm, and we're just spending money on feed on her every single month and we're not gonna be able to get anything out of her that's gonna be actually worth something. So sadly, we did rehome her, but I'm trying to think positive. The area that we had her in is now going to be our pumpkin patch. Let me go ahead and show y'all. So this is where Juicy was living. Now we did have a huge pallet house with like a hog panel and a big ugly tarp over the top. As you can see, we took that whole thing down. We patched the hole that was in the side of that old shed back there. And then if you look, there's actually already a bunch of watermelon. Actually, here, we can go in there. So these are from just when we fed her watermelon and pumpkins. These just randomly started growing. See all those flowers down there? Some of them aren't looking the best, but they'll be happy with the rain. But from what I'm assuming, I think all of these ones are pumpkins. You can see all the flowers down there. But then these are from the watermelons that we gave her. This one over here is really, really big. And it had some, or it has some big flowers and a bunch of flowers down there. And then we have another one right here. Another one over there. And then we have these ones over here. You can see that is really, really big already. Now this one is some kind of 
pumpkin, I'm assuming, but there's also a watermelon growing down in there. You can see the, uh, the leaf difference. And then same thing with that one right there. But then you can see how long this is getting. I don't want it to be going through the fence though. Come back on this side. There we go. So look how long this plant is already. So, I don't know if I showed y'all that one or not, but there's that one too. So yes, I am sad that we don't have Juicy anymore, but not only do I already have pumpkins and watermelon growing in here, but I'm actually going to be planting a lot more here very, very soon. So I expect to have a bunch of pumpkins in this area and watermelons soon. Juicy was one of the first animals I got here on the homestead and knowing what I know now, I probably would have never gotten Juicy. Um, I do not have any intention on eating a potbelly pig, especially one that was the size of how big she was. That would have been just a lot of fat and it wouldn't have been worth it. So knowing what I know now, I would have definitely gone with a different breed of pig. Now we are not gonna get pigs on this homestead. We're going to wait till we move to our next homestead before we decide to get pigs again. Now we are over here by the main chicken coop. And if you look behind me, we have a ton of larkspur that are popping up and they are just so beautiful. Now these are all self seeded from last year and so you can see there's different colors there's this light purpley pink one right here and then there's this really really beautiful one right here and i just absolutely love these and the fact that i didn't plant them this year and they just came back on their own definitely a plus for sure now the other thing over here is our grapefruit tree as you can see it is growing pretty nicely I don't think there's any buds on it or anything like that, but I'm okay with that. I thought it was completely dead and I'm just happy to see leaves on it. Now my pink lemon tree, I don't know what it's doing. That's what it looks like. It keeps getting those teeny tiny leaves on the very, very bottom, but then they die. So I'm thinking this isn't gonna do anything. We do have just the irises over here to water my arb here that's not looking really good and the girl's got a bug now sadly over here this apple tree got dug up by a rabbit so it's gone and the same thing is over here and it has completely dug up my apple tree it might be kind of hard to tell on camera but you can definitely see that it's laying over and it is dying i have replanted it several times but unfortunately, I have lost the war and I will no longer have apple trees here. So maybe that's my sign. This isn't gonna be our forever home anyways. So maybe I just need to wait and get more apple trees on my next farm. It may just be a weed, but that is absolutely beautiful. I think it actually has some medicinal purposes. I need to do more research and see if there's anything I can do with it. All the irises that I planted, they're not really looking that good, sadly. I transplanted some more from my neighbor, and the ones I transplanted look really, 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 really bad. So that's sadly what those are looking like. Not the best, and I definitely have some weeds in there as well. Now over here, the dahlias are definitely looking okay. We actually ran a drip system to them. So I know they're getting more consistent water now. So fingers crossed, hopefully those start putting on some pretty flowers soon. Now they're not looking perfect by any means. Definitely having pest damage and also some other damage on some of the leaves that I'm not sure exactly what's causing it. So if you know, please let me know down in the comments. But let me go ahead and turn y'all around and show you what these are looking like. Here's our first bed right here. You can see they're definitely getting pretty big, but if you look, these leaves, I don't know what's going on, but the outer edges are browning and dying. Not all of them, just some of them. And then lots of damage by, if I can find one of the bugs on here, I'll show you. They look like grasshoppers, but they're not exactly grasshoppers. Now this is exciting. We do have some buds starting to form on there. And you can see that one as well. 
So not all of them have a bunch of damage on them, but some of them definitely do. That one's smaller. These three never even did anything. They started coming up, but then every time they came up, they just died. So not sure on those. We have some trash over here. But these ones are doing okay, I guess. Oh, there's one of those bugs. Can you see it right there? It's kind of hard to tell, but it's... Oh, there it is. So it kind of looks like a grasshopper, but it has those really long antennas on the front. But those things are destroying my plants. There's also some other kind of bug down in there. Don't want that on there. Then we have those ones. These ones didn't do too good. You can see there are some buds on there. But look at all the leaf damage. Now I know the flowers are what I'm wanting on here. But I also don't want my leaves to look like this either. All the morning glories are doing okay. This butterfly bush. Look how beautiful those flowers are. It's starting to get windy. And then we have the purple hyacinth beans. I had to have my son replant some for me because if you look like that one down there starting to crisp up and die but this one's looking pretty good and then the last thing i want to show y'all are my kids beds where'd you find that well apparently i missed this ginormous strawberry when i was showing y'all the strawberry patch so she's definitely pretty happy about that so one last area I want to show y'all. This right here. The kids' beds are doing really, really good. Here are the watermelons that we planted. They are growing very nicely and maybe starting to put on some flowers on here. Oh, yeah, there's one down there. This is one of the tomatoes that I stuck in there. Our cantaloupes are already sprawling out of the bed. There's that one over there. We have our black morning glories in the middle. We have our eggplant, which sadly it had a flower on it, but I guess the flower fell off. Oh yeah, the flower fell off sadly. We have our gumfrina. The eucalyptus is doing really nice. And then we have our sage over there, our pineapple sage. And then my son's flowers down there. And I, we stuck some peppers in here as well. And then we also put a tomato in here. That is his ghost pepper. It's doing really nice. And then look at this. That is just beautiful. I love the color that he chose on that one. And then my oldest daughter's bed. She planted some zinnias and they are starting to grow. And then she's got her gumfrina. That is, I forgot what that was. <laughs> and then we have our salvia. Oh, those are uh, snapdragons. So those are doing good too. So here is our harvest from the garden today. Well, you guys, I think that's everything I wanted to show y'all. It's getting ready to start raining, so I don't want to get caught out here in the rain. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. We'll see y'all in the next video.